Hi, my name is Laura Cusin. I am the director of the Smart Center at Arkansas State University, and we're working with P3. And today we're going to go over the curriculum Vita outline. Um, basically, the question is, what do you put on a Vita? Um, primary thing that you want to start off with, obviously, is contact information. You're going to want to list your name, and you're going to want to list um, your what way to contact you. You can use cell phone number. Um, make sure if you use your cell phone number on your contact information that you have an appropriate message, uh, appropriate greeting for someone who might call you, whether it is uh, graduate school calling you for um, an interview or if it's a potential employer. You want to have a professional message. That's a key, key thing. Um, you want to make sure that there's no background noise, no music playing. It's just going to be very professional when that individual calls you. Um, same thing with your email address. If you have a work email address, home email address, school email address, you're going to want to include your email information so that your um, potential graduate school or employer can contact you. Make sure as well that your email information is appropriate. Um, you don't want to have anything that's going to come across um, and leave a bad taste in, in the person's you know, mind in terms of your professionalism. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to put on your Vita, a lot of times we have, do I put experience first, do I put education first? Typically the rule of thumb is that you're going to want to put your education next. Um, in terms of education, you're going to want to put your highest degree, your highest accomplishment first. So if you have a master's degree, you're going to want to list your master's degree. You're going to list the degree that you have, any potential minor that you might have. You're going to list the school that you obtained it from. You're going to want to list um, your time frame of, of either when you graduated or if you're still currently enrolled in, in your program. Um, so you'll put your highest degree first and then you're going to go down subsequently. The next thing, and this one is kind of very a little bit in terms of your experience. Your experience can be a, a combination of things. You can have a general experience in terms of work. Um, you might also consider breaking your experience off into work experience and research experience. The cool thing about this category is it really varies on what you're applying for and what your objective is for your application. So think about you know, who your potential target is, and who is going to be looking at this, and what they're going to want to know. What's going to be the key thing that they're looking at, what they're expecting to see in terms of your experience. If you're applying for something where you might have teaching experience, you might have work experience, you might have research experience that are all particularly relevant, you can actually break it down into those subcategories as well. Um, just make sure that when you break down your experience or when you list your experience, it's relative to what you're applying for and that it actually makes sense. Um, publications. Publications is another big one. This is big with academia. Um, if you've had any kind of publications, you want to list those. That's going to be a key thing that you're going to want to have listed on there. Same thing in terms of chronological. If you've got, you know, one publication, um, you might list that in terms of the other category. When you have your categories, make sure also, rule of thumb, is that you have more than one item listed in each category. If you don't have a lot of experience, you might want to just leave that out or you might want to fashion it in the sense that it's going to make, um, you know, like an, an, another category. You just don't want to have one thing listed under the category. Um, honors and awards are huge. Um, again, you want to focus on the most recent and, and you're going to kind of go back. Um, one thing that we recommend in terms of setting this up is, is depending on, you know, we talked previously about resume versus Vita, make one under each and list your categories. And it's good to, to get this started now. Even if you have no intention to apply to graduate school, let's say for a year, it's good to get it set up now. The reason being is because as things happen and occur, you can go in and you can add to it. Um, it's a lot easier to get it started and to get a draft, and you can go in and you can and tweak it as you need to, as opposed to waiting you know, to the last minute and then forgetting things. Um, so basically, the other category, this one is, is leave it up to you in terms of what's your objective, and that goes back. And oftentimes you don't even need to have another category. Unless you've got a lot of stuff that's relevant to what you're applying to, this is something that's not, not required. And as far as what you can put in the other category, um, it's really good to go online. You can get a lot of, of ideas. Um, some of the things they have down here, something kind of generic would be accomplishments, uh, affiliations that you might have. Um, kind of international experience. There's a whole multitude of things that you can add to that. Just make sure if you use an other category that you label it as such and that it's relevant to what you're applying to. Um, 